So here we are. What we need, what we need to gather for this fun adventure are scrap papers. If you have um, even old watercolors that you're not going to, like I've been cutting up my old watercolors, some of them that I'm not really that pleased with or I've had for a long time, you know, and I don't really want anymore. But, um, you know, remember the galaxy painting that we did a few months ago? That is going to be a great one. Or just washes of watercolor paper that you have um, with washes of watercolor. So if you have some thick watercolor papers, we can do one style. So here's like, here's my thick watercolor papers. Um, and that's to make this one. So we'll start with this. So I'm going to put the other step aside so I don't get all in the way because it gets kind of crazy. Um, all day I've been having, or since yesterday, I've got little scraps of paper flying everywhere. We also need a paper trimmer of some sort. If you don't have a paper trimmer, then scissors. Some scissors are fine. And a ruler if you want to have everything straight. Let's see, I'll grab my ruler just in case. Uh, uh, scissors, ruler, cutting knife if you need that. Um, also, some double stick tape if you have. Washi tape. I have some carpet tape that I've had in my garage for the longest time. And I'm going to use that. I'll show you how I use that. Um, the double stick tape, I use some a lot of times this stuff called red line tape. It's industrial strength double stick tape. But if you just have scotch double stick tape, any of that, um, another thing that you'll need or would like, you would probably want some uh, white glue. And this is the one I use, this little art glitter. And the reason I like it is they have these little tips. You can get really tiny, it's like a needle tip, and I love that. This one is kind of getting kind of goobery, but these are handy. And this white, it's just a PVA glue, but I really like the consistency. It's really nice stuff. So there's that. And then I have some blank greeting cards. And that's what I'm going to show you first is the first type of um, weaving. And we're going to call this open weaving. It's not a closed loom. It's an open loom. And I basically, uh, we, you know, I thought, well, how was I going to do this? But, you know, if you start to weave papers without some kind of way to hold them together, and then it's you know kind of crazy so i'm going to show you the technique that i kind of figured out so i already cut some some of these strips ahead of time but uh, just to show you how easy it is you just cut strips if you're going to be using let's say um i can cut them at different widths kind of wonky widths you know different it's kind of fun to do you know you can do half inch half inch three uh, three quarters it's fun to vary the size, I think, rather than um, to make it perfectly even. So I'm just kind of cutting some of these down at different widths. And this is my little, if you remember our galaxy paintings that we did, these are these are perfect for this because I didn't know what to do with these, <laughs> now I do. So I'm gonna cut several strips like that and you can just use the, cut the whole painting or just cut whatever you've got you know, just so I got that one. And then let's say I want to grab another painting. Remember this little- Would a guillotine piece? work as well? Or do you think- Oh, the guillotine's fine. Yeah, the guillotine's fine. Okay. Um, and if you don't have a paper cutter, please use, you know, scissors. You can just cut scissors yeah. with your scissors. Okay. So, and you don't have to make them perfectly straight. Um, that's why you know, it's not necessary to make them perfectly straight. Because the more, kind of more organic than wonky they are, I think it looks more interesting. But I'm just going to cut some little strips. So, you know, these paintings that I didn't really want to keep, but I'm really liking the strip. I think it's going to look really neat. So if you have uh, paintings in your stash that you weren't, weren't sure that you wanted to do anything with, you've got, now you've got something to work with. Extra, just never, we don't, we don't want to throw away paintings that we even think we don't like. We're like, eh, I don't know. Like this little you remember a few weeks ago or watercolor class we did the negative painting at the circles and i just really wasn't happy with the circles as a painting but boy is a patterned paper yummy these are going to be fun see how they look so neat when you uh, cut them up so that's so i'm just going to cut enough strips here just to have something to show you and then in different widths i'm not really caring that much about how how uh wide they are and so i'm not letting any paper go to waste doing this now i'm going to take a card what i have is i know this card here is five by seven so i know that my little weaving i don't want much bigger than five by seven 
So I want it smaller actually. So what I'm going to do is take some scissors and just kind of cut off. I'm going to cut these ends off so I don't have to. Let's see. I'm just going to cut that off so I don't have the white showing. I want just kind of the dark color. Of course, I don't even have to do that. But oops, that's not what I want. This one here. You can see how scraps get everywhere. So have a little handy, have a trash can handy. So because you're, you can get buried in your scraps if you're not careful. It, it's kind of crazy. So I've got some other little colors I thought were really pretty. I like this had some gold watercolor in it. And so it's just really fun. And I never really liked this painting, but I kept hanging on to it because I liked the gold. Um, and I had some doodling going on. I just thought that was really pretty. So I'm going to take this. And I know how wide my card is. So I have to look at this. And I'm going to just figure out, I'm going to make kind of a, see how wide I want to get. Okay, so I've got like a slight, I think I might add one more strip. Let's see, I think I'll add a plain or another gold, just a plain strip or a narrow strip. I can just do this one. Okay, so now I've got this, something is my, this is going to be the width of my card. Now here, and if I like the, you know, if I like to have uneven little parts, I'm going to have to cut these little parts off because, and I don't want these longer than seven, seven inches. So I'm going to cut off the ends so that they're no longer there, so that they basically stay within the borders of my card. I don't want it to go too off. So I'm just going to trim these off so that they're no longer than seven. But I don't mind them being off a little, you know, not perfect. They don't want, we don't want perfection here. We want some kind of flow. And here goes my little scraps everywhere. So <laughs> it's going to happen. So I've got all my little pieces are no longer than seven inches, I think. So I'm just going to double check. Yep, no longer than seven. So now we're good. And our other pieces are not going to be any longer than five because our, our card is five by seven. So I'm just going to lay these out. And now, normally, if you were to do a paper weaving and you didn't, you don't have some kind of um, something to hold it down, you need something to hold these little pieces down. Otherwise, you'd be weaving and it would be going everywhere. So I'm just going to lay this out, kind of leaving a little gap between, not much, but a little tiny gap between each of these. There's about maybe a hair, you know, like just a little bit. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of uh, washi tape and I'm doing the washi tape because I don't want to uh, I don't want to tear my my uh, strips or I don't want to tear it so I'm just going to go right at the top of it oops <laughs> and of course I, it, I moved it so anyway what I'm trying to do is just secure that so now I have a loom and I'm gonna I can actually reposition this one I think it needs it so I'm going to shift it a little so it's kind of going straight down rather than going across. But now I have myself a nice little loom. I have something, I'm anchoring it, and now I can start the weaving. So now I'm just gonna take pieces of, um, the same thing, I'm taking pieces of cut, these are, uh, this is just some cut paper, no longer than five across. So I'm gonna just kinda, let's see. I can always trim these off, I'm not worried about that. So, I'm going to start my first weaving. My first thing, I'm going under. Um, every other one, I'm just going under, and I'm going to push it as far as I can up to the top. So just to every other one. And then I'm going to take another one that's just a different color, and I'm going to go opposite. So this is actually the quickest. If you want to get a quick piece of art or card done, this is the quickest, most wonderful way. I'm just going to push this up as far as it'll go until it's snug, but not, it doesn't have to be too tight. There it is like that. And every other one. And then I'm going to take another piece of, let's see what I've got here. Oh, I've got this one. This is pretty. I thought that was really cool. Um, so you'll have little bits of your artwork still showing. And, you know, what was once just kind of not a very interesting piece of artwork is now a fabulous piece. Like I've got this pretty stuff going on. And you just want to lift every, actually let's do it down here. We'll go down here just like a way you would do if you were weaving um, on a loom. And I'm going to bring the paper up. 
Now, this is watercolor paper, so it's a lot easier to control, you know, handle than thin pieces of paper. If you have just strips of thin paper, it'll be a little bit, just a little hard, harder to handle. Now, I'm just going to take some thinner pieces because I think it's fun to vary the width and direct, you know, just vary it. If I can get some skinnier piece, here's a skinny blue piece. Kind of alternate solid with um, just every other piece, and you'll see it just basically locks together. And we'll go the, just all the way down the length of what's here. So I've only got, there's words for this in the weaving world, um, what these are. Um, weft, the weft threads or something, I don't know. I'm not a weaver, but this is the only weaving I'll ever do, I think. And I just love the way this is going to turn out. I just know it's going to be fun. So I see another big piece I could bring in, or I could bring a solid piece. And that's what the fun part about this is, is you can just pick whatever you want. Here's a nice big wide piece. I think that would look pretty. And just every other one, you just, and that holds it together. This is what's gonna hold it together. Just inserting that into every other until it locks in. And then I'll just keep going down the, the um, thing until I'm finished. And this one only took me yesterday. I made one and it was like maybe 4.30 in the afternoon because I was doing some other things. It took so long. It was really tedious, but I liked this one because it was really quick and instant, instant gratification. I was able to get something I really liked right away. Here, I love this one. That one's almost like I'm hanging on to that for some reason. <laughs> Don't want to get too attached to your pieces here. Now, this one's a little bit off, which I like because it's sort of wider at one end than at the other. I think that'd be fun. So as you get down farther down, it gets a little stiffer. But you do want to just go ahead and get those in every other one and I just don't want to make I want to make sure that it I don't want to go too much farther than the seven so i'm going to match my card up kind of look at it, it looks like I can go farther so that's good. And I think i'll bring in another oh what color what color so many to choose from and I can also just. Um, here we go. That's the one I was looking for. One of these, the little fish. Maybe the fish will show. Maybe they won't. We'll see. So I'm going to get this in underneath and over and under. And at the end, it starts to get a little bit stiffer. If you can see, yep, there we go. Now I've got that. So I've got, I could put one more piece in, a small piece, maybe, maybe not. I don't need, I don't think I'm going to need to. So I'm going to stop right here. But everything's locked together. So what I'm doing is I'm going to take this off gently. Now I can reuse the washi tape for another one if I want to. Just set it aside. I don't need to throw it away. And now I've got it's all stuck together pretty well. And now I'm just going to trim it. And here's where I need to have a trash can close by. But I'll just <laughs> I've got one right here in between my knees here. So I'm going to take and I don't really want it to be so even and perfect. So I'm going to pull maybe pull this up a little bit nope won't let me do it okay so now i'm just going to go ahead and trim it off and i could just trim you kind of evenly and see how when i lay it on the card how it's going to look just trim now everything's holding together without any glue or anything so that's what i love about this is the papers themselves just kind of lock right on and then i can lay it onto the card and i love it i love it just like that and here i'll show you how let me just move all these little, show you how I secure it to the card with double stick tape. I'm just going to keep all my little slivers because I plan to make more of these. I think these are going to be really nice cards, kind of artsy, very minimalist kind of modern art cards. I like them. So I, I think I might be making a bunch of them because they're just fun and easy and quick. So I'm putting the, moving all that out of the way and I'm going to save all my little pieces of scraps. I'll scooch that out of the way. And but yeah, save you save all of your little um, watercolor pieces like this. Just save them, and then you can you know when when you feel like making some weavings, then you'll have them. So here's how I attach it to the card. I turn over my weaving, and I love this little thing. It could be, and I could turn it into a coaster even back into the coaster thing. There's a lot of things you can do with it, but I'm going to just take some double stick tape, and this is that red line tape. I told you about this is like industrial strength <laughs> adhesive and 
And I want to get um, just, I don't need a whole lot to do this. I think I'll just put some right on this piece here. And I don't want my tape kind of showing through. And I think I just made it so it will show through, but we'll see. And I'm just going to trim it right up here. And I think that might be enough. But I could add a little more here. If you don't have this kind of stuff, you can use glue. Uh, you can use um, double stick, just plain old double stick, double stick scotch tape would also work. There, I think that's going to be really good. Right there, four places. And now I need to take, remove the liner off. Get that liner. Nope. Sometimes it takes a little, uh, you have to kind of, Wait, you want that liner to, uh, or you want the adhesive to stick to the paper, and then you lift the liner up, and there it is. You can see it. ATG uh, gun would work, you know, like a tape gun. Whatever you've got that you can use to stick your card or your weaving to your card. These would make nice little frame pieces, like you have... You know, like if you want to send this to somebody and then you, all you have to do is pop it into a little five by seven box frame and you've got a little piece of art because I think it's just really fun, especially, you know, whatever papers you have. So pick your card and then just lay it on top and then just line it up as much as you think it's about as good as it's going to get. And there it is. And the good thing about this one, I can have it as a tent card or a portrait style card. If you don't like the little pieces that are sticking up I kind of I don't mind them but if you want to you can you can uh, glue those down with some white glue I kind of like them sticking up it kind of looks more 3d this one I did glue the ends down and it really doesn't make much of a difference but so that one's my our first style and it's they're very fun and I can't wait to make a bunch of these the second style is called it's a um, creating your um, you're weaving with a closed loom. We'll call it the closed paper loom. And that's, I'll show you the example of that. And I was working on, well, this one is not finished. I just did the first layer, but this is a closed loom. And that, what that means, it's solid here and it's solid there. There's, they're not open. Same with this one. Um, you'll see it on this side. It's solid on these two sides. And then it's open. I'm, I'm weaving here like that. So, this one's not, it's almost finished, but I'll show you, I'm going to show you how I got these several, all these layers. The first thing we're going to do on the closed weaving, I'm going to do a really small one so that, you know, just to make this easy. If you have a bigger piece of paper, it can just be paper, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be thick. Um, you can use a larger sheet like a, you can even make a, a placemat this way, you know, if you had a large placemat size, in fact, this would be the best way to make paper placemat placemats. So we'll pretend that this is bigger. It's not. <laughs> you would just fold it in half. Okay, so whatever size paper you've got. I'm just doing a real small one. And then you're going to cut. You're going to make either even lines or uneven. It depends on what you want to do. But you can either use your ruler um, to make the marks. Let me just grab another ruler. If you want to make them evenly, exactly even apart, you know, even, you can mark with a pencil. You can mark. So what you want to do is measure a little bit. You want a little room at the top. I'm just going to measure a little, make a little pencil mark right here. And I don't think you see it, but I, it's very faint that it's there. And now I'm just going to go as wide as this ruler because I'm too lazy to measure. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just take this and bring it just to line it up. And I'm going to take make little lines. Now you don't have to do it this way. I'm just showing you this way is, you know, you get very even lines if you want them. If you don't, you can just cut them with scissors and no worries. So our paper is folded half while we're doing this. This is our little closed loom technique. And you can do it on any size paper. Large, you can make a large weaving, a small one. Um, you can vary the width of your, uh, of your uh, strips your weft lines or whatever these are called, but you can, it's up to you. It's however you want to do it. So this one though, just so you can see, what I'm going to do now is cut with my scissors. I'm going to cut through all of those, except I'm not going to, I'm just cutting to the spot that I, I don't want to cut it all the way through. So I'm giving it that room right at the top. 
and now that's going to be on both sides so you'll see just taking it up to that place right to where I marked it and so with a bigger piece I think it'd be so much fun to make placemats like Thanksgiving placemats paper ones I think that would be fun because I have some placemats but they're so ugly <laughs> so now what we've got if we open it up we have a we have our loom it's ready so we've got closed ends now you, you've got a little fold in the middle but it's going to be covered up after it's all done but there it is you can see i've got these areas now next step is to basically choose the paper you're going to be weaving through so i'm going to use this really uh you can use heavier paper or lighter paper um the lighter paper the lighter it is or the or the thinner it is the, the little more tricky it's a little trickier to um to make your weaving but it's not impossible like you can use really thin papers and you might have to weave them the thicker paper just goes straight through so i'm just going to show you this with a little bit thicker just because um just for speed i've been able to do it with the thin papers as well as the thick papers so i'm going to make sure that i cut my strips i can cut them any I'm going to cut them kind of wide this time. This is almost, they're almost like a, close to an inch wide or close to the width of the uh, original weft or whatever those are, my loom. So I'm just going to put them across and I want to change up the colors. I think it'd be fun to change this to different, uh, have an alternating color. So, so I'm just going to do that. So cut those into strips. Let's see, I might have enough here, but if not, I can always cut more. This is some marbled paper that I made years ago. It's been sitting in my paper stash for the longest time. And I thought, what am I going to do with this stuff? I was going to maybe use it to book, do a, you know, do a, uh, use it for a book cover or the inside of a book cover, but never got to it. So then I thought, oh, might as well, this is the time, use it now while I'm weaving. So I'm just going to cut some more strips. Whatever you've got, scissors are fine. And then I'll proceed with the weaving. All right, I think we've got enough to do it. I'll move this thing out of the way. Now, here we go. Do the thing, same thing, but this time you don't have an open end. You're just going to start every other. You just insert your paper every other um, strip. Now, a way to if it's going through difficult if you're having difficulty getting that through sometimes it's good to just take a little point make a little point on an end like this that helps to get those especially as you get tighter down below but here we go every other one so now i'm just doing the opposite i'm going under and then over under over under over and this one's a pretty easy one because it's a small one if you get small papers or a larger you know, larger uh, piece, then it'll take a little longer. And then just try to get it up to the highest part as you, that you can. And the same with this. I'm going to go ahead and do um, over this time. I'm starting it with a going over, so it's just the opposite. And then we just do it like this. This would be a fun trivet, too. Something to protect, you know, protect your table from water and stuff. You've got paper is a good thing. So I'll just... Do this one. And I like this closed in piece because really it's very sturdy and very versatile. So I'm just doing every other one. And then I'll show you how I just secure everything. Once it's all woven, then you can secure everything so nothing slides out. So I'm gonna go through here. And I love these bold colors against the black. Now, if I wanted to make a different color, you just change, you know, whatever your your um, solid, your loom, we'll call this your loom piece. That's your, that will be whatever color you want. Or you can do it in a pattern paper. I think that would look great too. So I think that's what I did with this one. Um, I used the marbled paper on for both the loom and the strips. 
Okay, let's get this one in here. And then what happens is if you have room, like not enough, you can cut your last one to fit the width of your last strip. So we'll show you that. Almost there. And this is stiff, so it's easy to go through, but the smaller papers aren't. Okay, so now what I have is a little bit, um, I've got this, oh, it's about a half the width of what I had there. So I'm just gonna trim this one in half so that I can make a nice tight. There we go. And then this time, what I could do is instead of being, I, mean, I could scooch this down and make it in between here if I want. Nope, I can't. <laughs> I thought I could. All right, so here I'm probably going to have to put, make a little pointed end. And then the last, this is, I can see that the last one I need to go under. Now this may be a little tight. So I need to just kind of slide that thing underneath and then just go every, just try to get the point to go through. Always the last part is a little bit harder. There it goes. And then just kind of slide that all the way through. Oops, come on. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to look at it from the back side and make sure that it's guiding in and then turn it over there we go then you can see it like that so that is this is this technique and then i'll show you whoo there we go couldn't see that now sometimes too you can curve the page just kind of curve the paper downward so it will when i get it to it will sort of go down into the Instead of curling up now that was able to do it that way same thing here i just gonna have to one more yeah okay so now my weaving is finished at least the first phase because by that's nice by itself eh, you know i mean it's kind of needs a little something i think so let me show you what i will do next so i'm going to grab some um well let's see what kind of paper i could use maybe some purple or Oh, what can I get? Let's see. Some red. Nope, that won't work. <laughs> I'm going to just try. Nope. Yeah, this might be fun. So I'm just going to grab some of this paper. I'm going to make really super thin strips. So I'm going to go. All right. Just enough to get through there. Okay. So now I'm going to just kind of thin. I want these to be a lot thinner than um I think about half the thickness of what I have there so you see how they're about that thick I'm just going to make them about about a quarter of an inch thick I'm going to make several maybe about a quarter of an inch and I like these little cutters because you can really see I mean even though they're good for thin papers but um, I think they're good for this kind of thing because you can go really fast you can get nice strips really easily and you can use scissors too so now let's say you know this black i just want to break up the black a little i think it's just a little strong so what i'm gonna do i won't be able to break up the black come to think of it um yeah i am okay <laughs> i'm just thinking out loud okay so now what i'm gonna do is um here's the closed ends and what i'm going to do is feed this through i'm starting at the top and I'm going to feed it through. And what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to create a, a pattern. I just and I'm breaking up that solid black a little bit. And I think this needs to have uh, needs to be pointy. Just a little bit. So what happens is it's going to make it look more interesting. And it's kind of it's just like a weaving technique that you would do. It's multi layers. So get that in there. Come on, go in. Sometimes having also a little bone folder is handy. But see how I'm now creating a pattern. And I think uh, Native American weavers that kind of have some of those weaving techniques, you can kind of use, you know, this is much more simplified, of course, but you can get some interesting patterns by just weaving smaller, thinner strips through over the areas that you've already woven. So. Here, and that will break that up so it won't look so solid black and then I can slide this around 
until I find until I like it. And then what I do is because this is not really woven, it's just kind of going through and it can move around. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of glue and right at the ends of both of this, you know, both ends of this, I'm just going to tack it down and then it's not going to move ever again. <laughs> it's there. And I can do that throughout the whole thing and it will change the look of it dramatically. Here I've got, I'll do this other one, I'll show you. The more you do, the more it looks interesting. So here I'll just bring it through. Got to find the, it's got to let me get in there though. There we are. So it really changes it. It makes for a really pretty pattern. I think this is going to be really pretty when it's all done. And then you can seal this with uh, your sealer, whatever kind of sealer you might have. You can seal these and make them waterproof, which I think is fun. You can then you put you put a vase over it or all kinds of things. So here I've got it going through and then same thing. I'm going to glue this down now that I've placed it. And then same on this side. I did leave my pencil marks, which I should have erased, but that's OK. Makes it I can always erase later. So there it is. So you can see how you can make a more interesting pattern doing that. And I can just keep going, but I won't. I'm going to move on to, excuse me, <clears throat> I'm going to move on to my other technique so you can see. A little water break there. Anyway, so what you do though, let's say when you're all finished, then you can just trim off all of your pieces so that it cleans everything up and looks ready to ready to be a trivet or whatever it's going to be um, another thing you can do with these is i'll show you in a moment you can cut them out once they're once you've got the glue on the ends and you may have glue or you've used double stick tape to uh, secure all the little um, pieces then you can cut out shapes you can use a die cutter you can just use scissors you can trace the back create a shape and then you've got really beautiful woven um, objects so that's that one, and then I'll play with that in a little bit. Now, the, uh, so you can see what I did with this one. That's what I was working on. Um, I wove. You can see there's this hasn't been secured yet, but I've, I'm just weaving to get more de more of a de detailed pattern. Plus, it feels um, much firmer, like a much heavier duty. Same with this one. I'm going to put. I think I'm going to put some purple solid pieces through that just to make it more interesting because it doesn't have enough light and dark. The, with this, what I did with this one is I color, I actually drew it with a pen because I just didn't see enough definition. And, yeah, you know, I'm still going to do some more stuff to that one. But I love the way these feel. These could be book covers. Like I, when I fold it in half, I really thought this would make a nice journal cover. Just feels really nice. So there's many things we can do with these. So let's go to the next thing. The next one is, um, I finished this little card this morning, actually. And it's just the woven pieces. I, and I think one of you made trees out of washi tape last week. And this gave this same idea, except I'm using the woven paper. So, which kind of gives a really interesting feel to it. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. This you could use, if you don't have that, that stuff, that weaving, whatever this stuff, this waffle honeycomb stuff, you can just make small weavings, um, very small pieces of paper. But I wanted to show you this honeycomb stuff. I did buy my package. I'll show you mine. I bought it off Amazon. Honeycomb cushioning paper packaging. It came in natural. You can get it in black, natural, or white. I got the black because I really like that. I like the fact that I can put um, paint on it. So I painted it. I rolled some interference blue and green on top of the black. And see how much just how gorgeous that looks. And then now it's much stronger, so I can do some a lot of weaving with that. So here I've just got a little piece here, since I'm not gonna make you go through the pains of of um, me weaving a whole thing. But these take a lot longer because there's a lot more pieces of paper. And what was that called again, Karen? Honey oh, sure, it's called honeycomb cushioning paper packaging. A lot of times, you know, you'll get like you see it in the grocery store, like your fancy. Fruits are wrapped in it. Um, you'll see this, it's just packaging. Here's the natural, so you can see the natural. Um, that was a different brand. It's a little less flexible. 
than the one I bought here. This one's got a lot of flex. And this one I got on Amazon and it's, um, they called it honeycomb cushion paper and I, that's how I found it. And it was really not expensive and it's it's got enough for me to last forever. It comes uh, 19 and a half by 15 inch. So you can make a really nice placemats and stuff, stuff like that. Um, you can also use it for packing things and wrapping soaps and bottles and things like that. So kind of neat, it's, an, it's a craft paper. And this one I like because it's black, but you can get the natural or anything. So you can wrap your dishes, pictures, glassware, vases, everything. It's a good thing to have, but I like it for crafts. <laughs> so now I gotta decide on this one, how wide my, I want, I can see the openings on the on this. You can see the opening on this, this honeycomb stuff on this one anyway. The opening is, what is that, my brain? Okay, I'm gonna do centimeters, okay. So it's a centimeter. I guess that whatever that is, if that's a centimeter, <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> so it's a centimeter. So I don't want to go to, I want to go, I'm not, I don't have a measuring thing. I just don't want to go much wider than that. So um, I'm going to cut strips to be about less than a centimeter, just a little bit less, because if you go too wide, it's just too hard to get them through. Uh, too hard. You can always trim them if it's too wide. You can you can always trim it down. So this is some scrapbook paper. A little. It's kind of thicker. It's on the. I. It's not paper I can fold. So I've been kind of reserving it. It's almost like a, in between a cardstock and a paper. And I just didn't feel like. Uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to lose this stuff because I like the pattern, but it just wasn't foldable. And I bought it thinking I was going to fold it, and I didn't. So yeah. You just have to do, you just save their papers because you never know, you might come up with a use for it. So here we go. I'm going to just start, I think I'm going to do a thinner one. Let's see, there we go. There it is. That's the one I wanted to do. This one. So I've got my honeycomb. I'm going to kind of open them up a little so I can see. And I'm just going to feed it just like all the others, you know, with the weaving, I'm going to go under and over. This one also needs probably a little trimming a little point to do that and just going under and over under and over every single every other just kind of naturally just you really don't have a choice it doesn't give you a you know you can only do it one way if you skip something now there are ways if you do skip um, you can make a pattern out of that but we're not doing that today there are ways to make patterns by skipping some of the uh, under and overs you just skip it and then you can actually, if you do it in a planned way, it will look like a pattern, like you, kind of like what I was showing you with the other, but in, with weeding instead. So I'm just going every other one. And this, because this one will take, this one is more tedious. This is one you would do watching a TV show, you know, because, uh, you know, it's, it takes time. It takes uh, a little bit of time and patience. I would say this, like, once you get it started and you have all your little strips cut, then you can just take it and take it somewhere, you know, put it in a little baggie. If you're going somewhere and you want to do something with your hands, this is a perfect activity for your hands. Eye hand coordination. And then you can, you know, do it, do the weaving part. And then when you get home or when you're not in front of your TV, you're talking, or you, you're visiting with a friend and you want to just do something crafty while you're visiting. Um, this is a great, it's just great to have a little, have it all set up in your little components and then you can put it together and make something out of it. But in the meantime, you're just making a woven fabric that you're going to make something out of later. So now I'm just finding the little things. These little honeycombs are fun. I'm hoping that if you're weaving something, I want, I'm hoping you're weaving something now, even if you don't have the honeycombs, you, you've got hopefully some papers on your, on your, you know, in your stash and you're making something out of just getting the idea of how to play with paper and weaving it, making fabric, paper fabric, kind of. And you can go finer, like little tiny thin ones, but I'm too, I just don't have the patience to make really, for, it would take me forever. I never became a weaver because of that, because I love woven fabrics better than I like um, crocheted or knitted, <clears throat> because it's, it's so amazing, but it just takes patience and a lot of work. So this is a, a way to get that feeling without all that work. 
and all the time consuming time consumption. So you can see what I needed to do here. I won't bore you with that part. What I made some, <clears throat> excuse me, I made some other this stuff, and I wanted to show you what I what you can do with it. So here, after you've completed a whole um, piece, what you could do like with this one, this one looks like it wants to be a heart. So what I'm going to do is just something really easy. I'm just folding it in half, and I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to cut it into the shape of a heart, and I'm just not making any plans. If you want to draw your heart ahead of time, that's fine. But there, I've made a really pretty heart. So now I can mount that on a card. I have a nope, I don't have a blank card. <laughs> but you can see what I can do with it. I can mount that on a card. Now, what I should do beforehand, though, before it goes before I, anything more falls apart, I do want to, to uh, get that backing. I want to uh, get the back so that it's secure. So what I'm doing is I'm going to put some double stick tape right over it. This is a do double stick carpet tape. And you all know this is pretty gnarly stuff. It's pretty strong. There, so now that's not going to, now my little weaving is not going anywhere. Now I can, now it's secure. The little bits aren't going to fall out because they were going to. And then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to go around and cut that ex the excess uh, stuff off. All the way to the edge. And this, it's good to have uh, scissors that, if you're using sticky tape like this, uh, have scissors that can handle the adhesive. Otherwise, you get sticky adhesive all of your scissors, and that's not fun either. <laughs> So, I, or I could just fold this in half and I could have done it that way too, but um, here I'm just going to do it this way, sort of the safe way. And I'm just going to cut to the edge because I don't want that sticky adhesive to get, you know, stick to me later. And then I'm going to save this heart for later. We can, um, I could do a little collage thing. Let's say, there we go. Um, I could lay like some other paper down. And let's see if I'm going to do a greeting card. This is the back of one, but let's say I've got this, and then I might have another piece of paper that I would put underneath. Not this one, but let's say this is the wrong paper, but um, you can kind of get the idea of what I'm, where I'm going here with this. But And now what I have is this double stick tape is now I have the backing. It, it's sticky. It's a sticker. Basically, I've made a sticker, and I can put that on, any, on anything I want, and I'll find something. Um, I'll figure something out. It'd be kind of fun to do. But there's that's one way to do that. And then, same. That's what I did for the these trees. Is I just took. Uh, you can kind of see. Oh, I did one more. I wanted to show you it's somewhere. There it is. I love this one. This one. I um, it was these trees exactly these trees. But what I did is I thought it needed some more Christmas colors. So what I did was I wove these which you'll see you can do that with this i just cut some really thin um, washi paper it's really thin and what i did and i'm going to do it on this i just wove it in between and this took a little work because um, this is kind of it's a thinner paper so i just wove it in between just like i showed you on that other one and that's how i was able to make it really interesting looking i think kind of added to it Gave it a little more of the color combination that I was looking for. And I don't want to bore you with that because it's going to take time and I and to push that through. See, it's thinner paper, so it, there's just a little more. I um, mean, you, you know, you could use like a little skewer, maybe. Um, these little bamboo skewers are really good for pushing through your pieces if you need to. So see the little skewer instead of my fingers, I'm able to just push it through a lot easier with this bamboo skewer. Then I'm not as gonna pull my hair out while I'm doing this. <laughs> so there, and then I could add, um, I can keep, you know, just kind of add, you can add interest to your weavings by doing that. Um, so that's, and then when I finish this one, I will make this one also, I'll cut this into the tree. The best thing is to cut your tree Put your double stick tape on first and then cut your tree shape and then that will keep all the little bits and pieces from falling out. And I think that that is it on my weaving thing and I'd love to see what everybody is doing and what you're what you think of this if you 
if you're going to make some, uh, go forward and go crazy like I've been going <laughs> making this, 